So convergence spasm is a very interesting phenomenon. It is what it sounds like. It's spasm, so it's inappropriate firing of the muscles. And this time it's gonna be convergence. So avergence is a slow movement that's in the opposite direction. So it's different than aversion, which goes in the same direction, but it is conjugate, it's two eyes, but it's going in the opposite direction. They're both going medial rectus firing. And so when that happens, the convergence spasm causes a esotropia. That esotropia is quite variable because it's hard to maintain the convergence. And it causes an incompetent esotropia. The eye is crossed in and it's gonna be worse on lateral gaze because they can't abduct because they're converging. And because it's a synkinetic response, th three pieces of, of, of information. Number one, the convergence, but number two, accommodation. And so they might get blurred vision during the accommodative spasm component. It changes the refraction by inducing plus power. So they get this refractive shift and meiosis of the pupils. The pupils constrict at near, that's part of the near reaction. So the near triad is synkinetic. They all happen at the same time. Syn, together, kinetic move. Convergent spasm, accommodative spasm, and meiosis of the pupils. It's usually a non-organic finding of functional visual disorder because it's voluntary and you can go try it on yourself. You can converge and create your own convergence spasm. You'll see that it blurs your vision and also causes meiosis of the pupils. Rarely, however, it is associated with an organic pathology. Normally it's known, and that's gonna be at the level of the thalamomesencephalic junction. But usually it's functional vision disorder. The key in differentiating features, variable esotropia and the meiosis of the pupils.